the, uh, the Haitian economy has not only been impacted by the political instability, but several other factors as well. And to help us understand all this, Kim Eves, editor of the Haiti Liberté Weekly News, uh, welcome to the show. Um, help us understand, you know, from the last report that we just watched, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of stability there. Um, what's going on? Well, there's no stability, and uh, as your report suggested, a lot of people are wondering what was the role of the United States in the uh, assassination of Chopinel Moïse. It seems very hard to believe that you could have uh, 30 to 40 uh, foreign mercenaries, Colombian mercenaries in Haiti, talking on their cell phones and so forth, and uh, none of this was... Uh, uh, picked up by the U.S. Embassy, which is the uh, fourth largest U.S. Embassy in the world, covered with antennas and all sorts of monitoring. Uh, so how is it possible that this uh, huge operation was uh, able to go uh, unnoticed and that they were not able to uh, give a heads up to uh, uh, Jovenel Moise? They did this 20 years earlier when a similar or a much smaller coup was being organized against uh, President René Preval, and they told him, and Preval uh, tried to round the guys up. They fled over to the DR and were part of the coup that happened in uh, 2004 against Aristide. But uh, this coup, you know, it seems it caught everybody uh, flat-footed. Uh, so uh, as a result, they put in a guy, this uh, Ariel Henry, who is a uh, de facto prime minister, um, as the uh, head of government and essentially head of state. There is no president, it's just the prime minister. But he was talking with the guy who apparently ordered the Colombians to shoot, to machine gun Jovenel Moise on the, uh, in the early morning hours of July 7th, a year ago. Mm -hmm. So uh, all of this leads to a situation of political dysfunction and hence economic dysfunction. Right. You, now, I'm going to get this straight here. You are insinuating, um, and maybe not you, but your sources are, insinuating that the U.S. has direct involvement in the assassination here, which is, which is a serious accusation. What proof do, do these individuals or entities have that the U.S. were involved? Well, all the, uh, everything is speculative at this point. There is no proof of anything. But the fact that they've sealed the um, documents uh, again, uh, against the defense attorney of Mario Antonio Palacios Palacios, who's one of the uh, Colombian mercenaries who went into the bedroom and helped machine gun uh, uh, Jovenel Moise. The, uh, the U.S. government has sealed these documents, so his, his uh, defense attorney can't see them, and this is supposedly for national security. Uh, so this is one uh, factor. There is furthermore the fact that uh, there was a, th there is a very prominent uh, Haitian op ophthalmologist, Dr. Yeah. Francis hey, Lars. Kim, I, Kim, I apologize. We're, we're up against a, a, a tight break here, but I want to get this question in very quickly is what's going to happen next to the country in the next three to six months? Uh, well, I think the mayhem is going to continue. Uh, the U.S. has put Haiti into a program called the Fragility Act, uh, where they're trying to stabilize it. But essentially, the masses of Haiti are being left to their own devices, and uh, this is creating a lot of criminality, but also a lot of, I could say, uh, counter-criminality in the form of vigilantism. Uh, and so this war is happening in the grassroots. The government is basically powerless. And, the U.S. doesn't really, I think, know what to do. They don't know, uh, as the Haitians say, to which saint to light a candle. Yeah, Kim Eves, uh, editor of the ha uh, Haiti uh, Liberté, uh, painting a dire picture there, and inflation is running rampant, and there's a lot of question marks. Um, thank you for helping us better understand the situation there on the ground. Thank you.